Hello and welcome um, to you, wherever you are today. Today we're going to look at differentiating exponential functions, and this forms a part of the Year 12 uh, Mathematics Syllabus, um, and it is pretty core, cool, really. So what we're going to look at, exponential functions, this is really just some function type. Uh, we've looked at different function types before. We've seen polynomial functions. Uh, we'll look at trig functions in future. Um, but exponential is just really one more type of function. So you should know what an exponential graph looks like. Uh, that was year 10 work, and you did see it again in year 11. Uh, so exponentials are equations with the form y equals a to the power of x. And normally a is going to be some uh, positive number. So a could be, say, you might get an equation being like, y equals 3 to the power of x. In terms of the graph of that, graphing that, draw a neatish sketch, um, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so this might be my graph of y equals 3 to the power of x. Okay. Exponentials, they generally will pass through 1 unless multiplied by a constant first. Here it will go through the point 1 there. In terms of a coordinate, you'll get the point 1, 3 as well up here somewhere. Now, differentiating, we are concerned here with gradient. So looking at this, uh, 3 to the power of x, what's the gradient going to be? Well, down here, the gradient is positive, but it is quite small. So it is increasing. The graph is going up, but the increase is quite small. Here it's positive. It's positive the whole way, so the whole thing will be above the axis. Um, and as we come further across, as x approaches positive infinity, so as we come over this way, my gradient gets really, really steep, really, really big. So if I was to differentiate this, uh, what my gradient function would look like, well, for 3 to the power of x, it's actually slightly uh, above the graph for the most part. So it actually looks a little bit like this. Okay, so that would be dy dx, which, being very close, does kind of create a few interesting ideas, interesting phenomenon. So, that's graphically what we're looking at. Doing it mathematically, looking at things algebraically, if you are differentiating, say we're going to differentiate our f of x equals 10 to the power of x. The only real method we have for differentiating this at this stage is going back to first principles. So first principles, look at your formula sheet. It says that f dash x is equal to the limit as x goes to 0. Sorry, h goes to 0. h goes to 0 of f x plus h minus f of x over h. And that's a definition. You've seen that before. Nothing new there today. So just taking f of x being 10 to the power of x, that means we have f of x plus h being 10 to the power of x plus h. And by my index laws, I can break that up. So I can say this is equal to 10 to the power of x multiplied by 10 to the power of h. From here, substituting into my formula, substituting into my first principle definition, that one there, I'm going to say that f dash x is equal to limit h goes to 0, uh, f of x plus h, so that's going to be 10 to the power of x times 10 to the power of h uh, minus 10 to the power of x on h. I'm just going to make this nice and clear so we know what we're doing down at the bottom here. What I'm going to do come down here, I'm going to actually factorize out 10 to the power of x from there. So this is equal to the limit h goes to 0 
of 10 to the power of x, 10 to the power of h minus 1 on h. And I'll note here that 10 to the power of x, that doesn't involve h. So because there's no h involved there, and my limit has to do with h, I'm going to bring 10 to the power of x out the front. So this is equal to 10 to the power of x by the limit h goes to 0 of 10 to the h minus 1 on h. And right now I can't actually evaluate this exactly. So what I'll do, this is for demonstration purposes really at this stage, so I'm going to substitute in h being something nice and small. So if I substitute in h is 0 0.0001, um, in doing that, this is going to come out to be a constant, and it's about 2 point something. Okay. So if I substitute that in, I'm going 10 to the power of 0 0.001, 0 0.0001 minus 1 over 0 0.0001. Um, and like I said, it would be about 2 point something. What's interesting about that is that by the time I've done that, I'm ending up with 2.3 is what it is. I'm ending up with 10 to the power of x or 2.3 um, 0.26 multiplied by 10 to the power of x. Okay. Of note here, this here. You should recognize this is f of x. So if this is f dash x here, f dash x is the same as f of x but multiplied by some constant, 2.3026 here today. Okay, so 2.3026 times 10 to the power of x multiplied by f of x. And that's interesting, uh, but like I said with the graph a bit earlier, this pink graph is just some constant multiple of the blue graph. So it's the blue graph multiplied by something. Uh, with 3 to the power of x, it's actually quite close. Uh, with the 10 to the power of x example I've done down the bottom here, the graph would be quite different. Oops, excuse me for a second there. Um, so moving on then, what's kind of important we don't really differentiate 10 to the power of x much in the course, uh, or things of constant nature. We generally want to tend toward an idea known as e, or a mathematical constant known as e. So what happens if I draw up my axes, if I have 2 to the power of x, and I graph that, f of x equals 2 to the power of x. In the case of 2 to the power of x, f dash x, like we did above, f dash x is actually beneath. So f dash x comes through like this, sorry, And f dash x is equal to 0 0.6931 times 2 to the power of x. So that there, f of x has appeared again. So in the case of f of x being 2 to the power of x, the derivative of that is actually slightly below the curve because this here is less than 1. So it's just a bit less than the curve. So 2 to the power of x, 0 0.6931 times 2 to the power of x. Getting a bit more detail on this. If I draw another graph, and I draw the graph of 3 to the power of x. f of x equals 3 to the power of x. It turns out for this graph, f dash x, 
struggling drawing with this thing. F dash x is equal to 1.0986 times 3 to the power of x. So in the case of 3 to the power of x, this is slightly above, f dash x is slightly above the starting curve. I would recommend going on to Desmos and, and graphing these. Go, go and graph 2 to the power of x, go and graph 3 to the power of x. Um, so with 3 to the power of x, we are slightly above, and that is interesting. 2 to the power of x was below, 3 to the power of x is above. It turns out there is a number in between 2 to the power of x and 3 to the power of x, such that f of x here, there is a value such that the f dash x is actually the same as f of x. Oops. f dash x equals f of x. Okay. And that number is known as e. So if you have um, y equals 2.71828 to the power of x, it's actually a mathematical constant that does keep going. Um, this is known as e. And when you differentiate, so you've got y equals e to the power of x, it turns out that dy dx is equal to 1 times e to the power of x, or just e to the power of x. So what we've got here, f dash x equals f of x. So e, that holds true. We saw above, just to reiterate, that 3 to the power of x came slightly above, 1.098. 2 to the power of x was slightly below. E is smack bang in the middle. E, our mathematical constant E, has the property such that um, f dash x equals f of x, or more explicitly stated, if you differentiate d on dx, of e to the x, you get e to the x. And this is a mathematical rule. Uh, it's pretty bread and butter for this unit. You'll need to know that one pretty firmly. In terms of looking at questions for it, um, applications, we do a lot of work with this with the chain rule. So your chain rule, you get a function up here in terms of u, your chain rule, go through to find answers from differentiating. Um, that's kind of the theory behind um, E, the theory behind differentiating your exponentials. When it comes to differentiating, just before we go, when we did have, scroll up a little bit, when we had 10 to the power of x here, we differentiated from first principles, we will not be doing that throughout the rest of this unit. Um, it's really nice to differentiate from first principles to get an initial case, um, but what we can do, we can be a little bit interesting in terms of exponentials and logs. Um, and given that, so we'll use some of the properties of exponentials to differentiate from first, differentiate things like two to the power of x again. So that there, we're not gonna do from first principles. This here, not from first principles either. Um, that'll all come later when we do logs. So the log laws will help us out. Um, but that's our rule for today, that one right there. So write that down, um, get that ingrained in your head. Uh, I'll come back and do another video in a second for uh, some examples of this. Uh, but that is differentiating exponentials in a nutshell. Uh, thanks for watching and best of luck.